Hey, greetings. Welcome to Performance Reviews, where we give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today, I have a Shark Duo Clean. Now, it's been a few years since I've had a shark up on the bench, so I was hoping this would change my mind with Shark. I was hoping maybe they would have developed their product life a little bit more. It appears they've doubled down on their business model of being the disposable lighter of the vacuum industry. So don't expect me to be a stay-at-home mom justifying your purchase with this review. I'm going to give you the review from the technician's point of view. What is my relationship to Shark Vacuum? Well, I have none. I went and purchased this out. Big thank you to our Patreon supporters who make this sort of stuff happen. Link below if you're interested in joining Patreon to see exclusive content and get early access to videos. Let's talk about included accessories with the Shark. I think it's nice to give you a turbo brush. This turbo brush does open for cleaning, so I like that. You do need to clean these occasionally for debris. I suspect they actually copied a different design that looks like a straight up copy from a Hoover. What's included as far as a dusting brush, you don't get a real dusting brush with this. You get this strange upholstery tool dusting brush combo. And why, why I say this is strange is the angle of this makes this hard to use. So if you're trying to do above floor cleaning, it's really limited with this. The angle of this dusting brush as discussed earlier. It's pretty bad. I can't actually use it to dust anything. This is just a normal door height, nothing special. If I want to get up high, well, I can't quite reach it. The hose is fully extended. So the stretch hose is very small. I would say tool cleaning is not this vacuum strong suit. Bristles are very stiff, so they might scratch something. The crevice tool is a little wider than most, but that should get the job done. The thing that's really weird is when you need to use your tools, yeah, you can use your hose, but you can't use your wand without unclipping the cord. So then you have to pull your wand out and your wand has this big chunk on it. And this chunk really makes it hard to get into tight places. So I find it's got some very sharp edges, so you could cut yourself or scratch something up trying to get under something with this. And considering the bulk of this unit, you'll need to do that. It's really a shame Shark uses a non-standard fitting, which means we can't adopt aftermarket accessories to it. Having your own fitting wouldn't be a problem if they had their own ecosystem, like Dyson or Mila or Lindhouse or something like that. But instead they use a proprietary fitting and then they really don't offer any other accessories than what you see here. So what you get with your Shark is about the only accessories you can fit on the end of the hose. And that's really aggravating because it's really not a great tool set. It's subpar to even things that are half the cost of this. As I said in the unboxing video, tool storage is a bit of a conundrum because you can fit these on here, but you have no place to fit your turbo brush easily. Well, now you don't get your crevice tool. So you have to pick what you want on there. And this really doesn't fit on there quite well. I, I really had to force that on there. I do like that if you need to lift off, there is a quick button right there. Your carpet floor switch is in an awkward place. Having to bend over below knee level to hit your power button and your hard floor button is really awkward. Furthermore, the hard floor button doesn't actually shut off the brush roller, which again, if you have wood floor or anything that could get scratched is a big problem having a spinning brush roller. I, I think that's a vast oversight on this model. I know previous models, they did have the ability to shut this off for hard floor and they've decided to go away from that. The reason the switch is here is to save money. If they were to move it to the handle, then you have to wire it up. You see some budget vacuums, they put the switch at the base of the unit. I really wish they had just done that. There's no reason for a two-speed switch on this machine since it doesn't shut off the brush roller. Kind of weird. I think they just kind of recycled a switch and a, a mold from another design. The weight on the unit is advertised as lightweight, though it seems to be about average in terms of vacuum cleaners. It's about 14 pounds. It's really no lighter than something like a Cebo Felix, any of the Hoover uprights, and it's not as light as something like an Auric, so I'm not sure why they brag about the weight. And here's the Shark next to some common vacuums for size. Let's talk a little bit about how you get to your commonly maintained items. So you have your dust bin, which is actually surprisingly really small. The fill line is right here. So really small dustbin on this model. 
this is maybe 1 20th the size of a vacuum bag at most. You have the filter here. I do like that you can see that. And you'll need to rinse this filter out probably every time you dump that. If you look, see just what got in this during my few pickup tests with this machine. You can see quite a bit has saturated those filters. You can also see right there that the dust has gone in through the motor. Again, this is by design with Shark. They, they don't expect a long life out of these motors. There is a little explanation right here that shows where the filter is, though they neglect to mention that there is another filter under here that needs to be maintained. So that's one, two, three filters that need to be maintained. You'll have to tell me if you think this is easier than just changing a vacuum bag. Keep in mind this HEPA filter, every three to six months you'll need to change this. This cannot be washed. These guys, like I said, you'll wash about every bin. And if you were to buy this, I would say you'll need a second set of these. That's why other brands usually include a second set of the washable filters. And they're only going to take so many washes. They've been using the same filter material for a very long time. And I can tell you, after a few months of washing those, those are going to be need to be replaced. The foam is a very, very uh, cheap and it tends to degrade rather fast. All right, we're outside and we need to empty this machine. And the reason we go outside is vacuum dust is actually quite hazardous to breathe. Never do this inside, always do it outside. You can go take a look, IRB Laboratory did a great study on vacuum dust and lung damage. I'm not trying to be an alarmist here, but those are the facts when we're dealing with this. As you can see, even though this machine has a HEPA filter, you still have to go touch and deal with the dust. And that's just unacceptable in 2021 where we have better solutions to this problem. As far as suction goes, it started out with a healthy 30 some inches of working vacuum, which quickly went down as I vacuumed my house a few times. And now the machine is at blismal, like 15 inches of working vacuum. Even after washing the filters, it still hasn't gone fully back up. So this is a very primitive bagless technology. Something like we would see in the 90s would be similar to this. I can't believe Shark is still implementing a system without proper cyclone technology. The Dyson patent on that has been expired for over a decade. Now, if you're new to performance reviews, we're gonna do a standard pickup test, which we use a studio mic, so you're gonna hear the real sound of the machine. This has breakfast cereal, flour, cat litter, and fresh pet hair. We're going to use this on the number one setting, which is the hard floor setting of this machine. It does not have the ability to stop the middle roller. So that means this is okay for tile floor or linoleum flo floor, but you probably wouldn't want to use this on something like wood. Uh, it could scratch it. You can see there's some flour left behind. It's snow plowed, a little bit of cat litter. Um, it did well with the pet hair and the breakfast cereal. I'm not sure how this got here, but I have a feeling what happened was because it exhausts like down, I have a feeling that the air just moved it there. It's not the actual nozzle. All right, let's see how it does on my soft carpet. Again, we have breakfast here, flour, cat litter, and fresh pet hair. And we're going to use that in the number two setting, which is the carpet setting. I don't know if that came out on camera, but the roller struggled to get up to the proper RPM. And, well, we see some uh, breakfast cereal on the edge. So I think edge cleaning really isn't its thing. Ooh, it kind of rubbed a lot of that flour into the carpet. We have, yeah, we got cat litter in the carpet here. Yeah, so it actually kind of embedded the finer things. That's interesting. And then a little bit of pet hair, but very little. So it did about as expected of any of the grocery store style machines. Not good at edge cleaning was kind of an understatement. It's some of the worst I've seen.
I'll link it at the end of this video, but basically I was right. This head does embed the dirt further into the carpet rather than sucking it up. I have a whole video of why this nozzle design is really flawed. Well, welcome to the In the Shock segment, where I usually take the vacuum cleaner apart and tell you how it's made and how it would be to repair the machine. Now, with this particular machine, I don't actually need to do that. Shark is the disposable lighter of the vacuum industry. This machine is meant to be thrown out in six months to a year. Good luck with that. Now, I bet you're saying, well, what about that warranty? Isn't it a little longer? It is. That comes with the caveat. It's kind of a one-time use warranty. It's not like the others in the industry. So what happens is you call Shark's 1-800 number. Now, if it's a part they can send you in the mail, they'll send it to you in the mail. If it's a motor in the unit or something more major, which oftentimes it is, what they do is they offer you a refurbished unit and you pay the shipping. That's right. Under the warranty, you're going to have to shell out money to collect on that, which is atrocious and one of the worst cases in the industry. And for those of you who aren't familiar with vacuum warranties, standard practice in the industry is you bring it to a local shop and have them take care of it, or they send you a replacement in the mail. Now, a good thing about the Shark is it is a lift away model, which means if you do have to do stairs, you can press the button and lift away. And now you can use the accessories, right? Wrong. You still have to undo the cord right here. And now we can use the accessories and you have this, I guess, to act as a handle. Now, if you don't want the wand, there's nowhere to store the wand off the machine. So you end up having basically this lump of the machine that you have to then set somewhere. And that's what's gonna happen. Now we can set the machine on stairs. Let's try the included turbo nozzle. I'm very curious to see how this goes. All right. Turbo nozzle did all right. It left a little bit of hair behind, but not much. Overall, for a budget vacuum, that's pretty good. Let's try the other upholstery tool that's included, which again, there's no way to store this piece. So we'll just add that to the pile. So overall, that's pretty decent for stair cleaning, that it breaks down. I don't feel like this is very stable on the stairs. Just giving this even just a little tug of a hose, whoops, could cause that. So I would say it's definitely a two-handed operation, unlike most canister vacuums. Now here comes the real cumbersome part. I'm going to speed up this footage, but I'll let you know how long it takes. And there you go, now it's reassembled. Oh, no it's not. I now have to clip the cord. Now it's reassembled and ready for regular floor cleaning. A mixed point with the Shark is low places. Why the head is pretty flat, you're limited by the canister of how far you can go under. So if you're trying to clean like under a bed or really anything more than a ledge on a kitchen counter, it's not going to get under there. Now that shouldn't be a problem because it has a good set of accessories, right? Wrong. <laughs> I find that this thing right here gets caught on stuff. And again, there's no way, unfortunately on this model, to put your head on there. I understand that Shark does have a model where you can put the head down, but I would suspect uh, that you wouldn't go far with that. Cord length is average in this segment at 25 feet. Now keep in mind, some of that is robbed by where the cord is low mounted on the machine. It has to go all the way up on the wand. Well, my final thoughts on the Shark Duo Clean after vacuuming with it for a little over a month is that this machine is not meant for a house. It's meant for an apartment and somebody who doesn't vacuum regularly. 
The bin gets really full really fast. It requires more maintenance than other vacuums in its price range. And it's not good at carpet or hard floor pickup and the tools aren't particularly good. So I'm not exactly sure why one would choose this over the other options on the market. Because this review is a little bit of a doozy, I'm gonna include at the end of this vacuums that I recommend where you see they've passed most of the tests or all of the tests that we do here at Performance Reviews. To give you an idea how full that bin gets, I vacuumed most of my bedroom. I didn't quite get to all my closets before the bin got full and needed to be emptied, nor did I get to the bathroom. And that's the problem, is unless you have 500 square feet, this machine is gonna just be too much maintenance for you. So those are my thoughts on the Shark Duo Clean. I hope this has helped you make an informed decision on whether or not to purchase this or any other vacuums. Have yourself a wonderful day.